Hi, my name is John Gear. I work for Tinkara USA. I do customer service work. Um, I've been tying flies for uh, 15, 20 years now. Uh, one of the things that's really cool about the Tankara fly tying is that the flies are very simple. And, and I think that uh, part of the reason the Sakasa style fly has uh, um, become so popular is it's a very practical fly to be tied in hand. I think that's probably how they were tied a lot when commercial anglers in Japan first started fishing them. Um, one thing that's cool about this is if, if you're um, an experienced fly tire, it's a really cool new challenge. Um, if you're just getting started, it means you don't have to buy so many tools. So um, I'm going to show you guys a way to tie a very simple Sakasa fly in hand and uh, using just a bobbin and scissors. You can do it without a bobbin. I do think the bobbin makes it much easier, um, but, uh, but you, I've done it without. So today I'm going to use a bobbin because that's what I actually really prefer to do. I'm going to start out with the TMCO 206 BL hook. You can use any hook. Um, it doesn't even have to be a fly tying hook, especially if you're fishing for species like bass and bluegill and stuff like that. I do think there's some really great trout hooks out on the market, um, both eyed hooks and, and some of the cool hooks that a lot of tinkar anglers use are actually eyeless hooks. And uh, you can look around and find those online too. So, so I'm going to start out with my size 12 206 BL hook. For a hackle, I really like to use speckled hen saddle. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It's easy to find at most fly shops that actually carry a good selection of tying materials. Um, and it just kind of comes out looking really good. So, um, so this is my uh, hen saddle patch. You'll kind of develop an eye for what feathers you want. Um, it's more important to you than the fish. I don't think the fish really care if the fe feathers are a little too big or too small. So when you pluck them from the body, they're going to have all this fuzz. This isn't really what you want to tie with. So I grab the feather by the tip, and I'm going to strip all that fluff, the phyllo plume, some people call it. So Now, to, to continue to prep the feather, and it's very important that you get everything prepped before you start tying the fly when you tie in hand, I'm going to grab the feather by the very tip, and I'm going to gently stroke the fibers back up the stem. So now I have a feather that's ready to tie with. Um, I don't have to do anything to it. I'm not going to have to fumble with this while I'm holding the hook in my hand. For thread, I'm just going to use regular uh, sewing thread. Uh, I like a real robust, thick sewing thread more so than some of the, the small fly tying threads. It gives the fly a nice uh, uh, character, uh, kind of almost a segmented look. So I think that's kind of fun. Uh, fly tying threads are great, uh, but uh, for this type of fly, I just think that sewing thread works better. So I'm going to start out, leave myself a few inches of overlap. I'm going to hold the hook. I'm, I'm right-handed, but I'm going to hold the hook in my left hand uh, between my thumb and index finger. Get it where I want it. Hold the line in these three fingers, or the tying thread. I'm going to start right behind the eye of the hook and use that to catch the thread. And I'm going to make about six or seven turns back, six or seven turns forward, six or seven turns back again, and then I'm good for now. I'm going to pull this tag into the back where it's out of my way. I'm not going to trim it yet. I want to do as few different f functions as I can get away with when I tie in hand and keep it really simple so I'm not dropping my hook, etc. cetera. Um, so once I have that tag in back and I've got this area right behind the thread opened up, I'm going to drop that point that I made when I stroke the fibers back right in there, and that's going to be where the thread's going to overlay. Now, I also have the cup of the feather facing me. Uh, when you tie with a shield-shaped feather, you want the cup facing you when you're tying it in from the tip like this. Now, I've got the tip in there. I'm going to make one, two, three, four, five, six wraps, and readjust my grip, make sure it's good for wrapping the, the hackle. Now, the hackle's facing back right now, but we want that Sakasa shape going forward. You'll notice most of the time, once I jog this around the hook, it'll flare forward. The other nice thing about tying in hand is my thumb and, and index finger here are going to act as a hackle gauge. So they're going to help keep those hackle fibers going forward too, kind of regardless of what the, the feather itself does. So I'm going to start wrapping. You can see I have my thumb and my index finger keeping the hackle going forward. And it's starting to twist on me. I can still keep it going forward. Now when I get to the bare stem where I've stripped off all that fluff, I'll tuck it between my thumb and index finger, okay? And when I do that, they kind of slide forward and push those, those fibers forward into that nice Sakasa shape. And I'll do a little bit more preening 
and then I'll make a couple of wraps just to anchor the stem and then I'll do a little bit more preening and then I can let go of the hook make sure the feather fibers are going the way I want them to okay once I do that I'll start making a few more wraps down the hook notice I still haven't trimmed anything now once I've made about seven eight wraps back down the hook like that I'm gonna flip the fly around okay and I did that with my two index fingers brought it around so I could reverse my grip and now I'm holding the fly from the front I'm gonna pull up on the stem and the tag into thread I'm gonna try and trim everything in one motion now you can't always get it in one so I still have a lot of feather in there that I have to trim you can leave that sticking out it's not gonna hurt anything I just don't like the looks of it once I have that trimmed I'm gonna turn the fly back hold it again by the bend in the hook Sometimes you'll catch those fibers and you have to preen them back forward. Now I'm going to start coming back up the shank. And once I get into these feathers, I'm going to make sure that the thread is going to hold it with the hackle fibers facing forward in a nice Sakasa style. I don't like it really forward, but I want to make sure that they are angled forward. And they're, kind of, they're pretty much doing it naturally for me because of the way it wrapped. But I'll put a couple more wraps of thread right up against the hackle just to make sure. And then I'm going to start going back down the hook shank. Now I'm going to go past where I stopped the thread last time, about two or three turns, because I want to thread base down where I throw my half hitch finishes. So, and that's how I'm going to finish this fly at the back with three half hitches, but I want a half hitch over thread or the thread's going to be more likely to skip on me. And, and the, you'll lose your knot. So I've got, I just flipped my hook. I'll show you that again turn it around and upside down. Now the hook point's going that way, it's up in the air. I'm gonna pull my bobbin down so I have plenty of room, catch the thread with my middle finger on my left hand, pinch it with my right hand and bring a loop up over. And again, I want that loop over thread. I don't want it over bare hook shank or it's gonna come loose right away. I did one, two, and three. Cinch that down nice and tight, hold it up, and I like to hold it with the bobbin weight holding the thread tight. And I'll just adjust the fibers, make sure that they're making a nice Sakasa style fly. Normally when I finish a fly like this, I like to put a drop of some sort of super glue on the thread. The sewing thread doesn't tend to hold a half hitch or a whip finish as well as some of the, the threads that are actually designed for fly tying. So I do like to use some sort of super glue on the body. Um, although you can fish the fly just like this and it'll be fine. So, but very simple fly. I didn't have to use a lot of tools. Um, all you need is a pair of scissors and thread. Um, a bobbin is very helpful, but you don't even have to have that. So thank you.